nobody is defined by what they've gone through if anything you're only defined by how you have dealt with it i always say niceness and kindness are two different things the dumber you are the more fun you have if you're self-aware enough to tell me that you're not self-aware you're self-aware that just sounds so stupid hello what is up boyfriends girlfriends and everybody in between my name is lexi if you haven't seen my face before go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the nice comment shout out of this video goes to this person right here thank you so so much for all of your kind words they truly truly mean the world and if you want to be my next nice comment shout out in my next video just leave a nice comment down below i am hoping that this video sparks interest in enough of you to click it for me to make this a bit of a series on my channel basically i have a lot to say and i'm gonna get it off of my chest in this video whether you agree with what i have to say or disagree kindly share your own opinions observations experiences situations in the comments below all perspectives as long as they are shared in a respectful manner, will be respected on this channel. Without any further ado, let's get into this video. I am 20. And actually, the day that you guys are watching this, or the day that this video goes up, I will be 21. It'll be my 21st birthday on June 18th. So that's super exciting. But I say that because, yes, I'm young. Yes, I have so much more life to live. My opinions on these topics, and honestly, anything that I say on my channel are subject to change just because I am a changing and growing individual. But right now, this is how I feel about the things that I'm going to talk about. I do have four topics that I would like to talk about in this video and the first one is trauma, the second one are intentions, the third is daddy issues, and the fourth is dating. So I'm just so excited like I, I've been wanting to like film a video like this for the longest time and it's just like does anybody really care about what I have to say? But I care about what I have to say so I'm just gonna throw it out here. Let's get into our first topic which is a heavy hitter, trauma. <laughs> My first and overarching opinion in conversations regarding trauma and just the topic of trauma in general is that each individual decides what you do with your trauma. There is a certain level of responsibility you have to heal, to acknowledge, to work through whatever bad things that you have encountered in life that have happened in your life. Granted, you are not responsible for the way that people treat you, the trauma that has been inflicted upon you, but you are so, so responsible in dealing with it once you do have the resources. I don't think that anybody should take responsibility for what other people do to them but i do think that things that happen to you have a positive or negative effect on you if it so happens to be a negative effect you do decide what you do with that a lot of guys i notice they'll like lean into the whole like oh i have trust issues thing like i'll never trust another woman again blah 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 blah, blah. that's not good and that's not something that you should be walking around here flaunting if anything take yourself out of the dating pool and deal with that on your own time because i know for me i've been through a lot of stuff stuff that i will never ever share you guys will never ever know but just know i've been through a lot um even though it might not seem like it all the bad things that have happened to me i could sit and wallow in it and then inflict that same kind of pain on other people because when you are in a situation where you are experiencing trauma or you're in an environment especially when you are in your really important fundamental years of development you master like if you're being emotionally abused you master the art of being emotionally abusive to other people and a lot of the times a lot of people instead of saying like hey this person made me feel this way i never want to make anybody feel like this i know exactly how they did it to me i know exactly how it felt i would never want anybody not even my worst enemy to feel the way that this person has made me feel to be in a situation that this person has put me in to feel a certain way but a lot of people don't think like that a lot of people don't proactively try not to harm other people because i will say it is a lot easier to just fall into those same cycles and patterns of abuse of trauma bonding of inflicting harm and pain whether it's emotional or physical onto other people you do have to be very 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 careful with you know where people are at in their healing journey granted i believe that absolutely everybody deserves love you can lead the horse to water but you can't make them drink okay you can lead the horse to water but you cannot make them drink and a lot of people think that just like talking and harping on an issue and bringing it up over and over and over again is processing and healing and really it's not you're just literally taking yourself back 
to that situation and you're reliving it and you're making the people around you who might have also experienced that with you relive it and i don't think that that's fair to anybody so heal on your own time another subtopic to this trauma topic is this whole skewed idea that like getting to know someone and building a strong bond with somebody is just glorified trauma dumping so there was a person that i dealt with about a month ago not in my life anymore thank goodness you know we were just getting to know each other and this person had a very skewed perception and ideology of what it meant to truly get to know somebody this person would just like really just dump trauma of course me being a nurturing and supportive emotionally supportive person i would nurture them comfort them try to emotionally support them but it's like once that person was done dumping their trauma onto me it was like there was this expectation for me to trauma dump at the same level as that as a means to get to know each other and like build a bond which i think is really unhealthy of course everybody's had bad things that have happened to them that's completely normal nobody is defined by what they've gone through if anything you're only defined by how you have dealt with it which is pretty much a summary of what i've said up until this point on this topic it is very uncomfortable and i will say it's something that a lot of people need to be aware of especially in friendships and dating it doesn't matter what kind of relationship that you're pursuing or building with another person it's really easy to not realize that that's a major red flag of course when it comes to getting to know someone when it comes to bonding with somebody when it comes to you know building rapport and a relationship with somebody the bad things that they go through that's a part of them that's a part of who they are but i feel like there is also a time and a place and if somebody wants to share something that they've gone through then that's fine but there should be no expectation to just like sit and exchange different traumas and different hardships because that's a little weird that's a little weird that's really weird it's more than a little weird it's really weird so i would say if you notice that you know especially a new relationship it's different if you're like really close with somebody you've known them for a long time whatever whatever there are healthy ways to share your hardships and share you know your trauma but when it's just like oh i'm gonna throw this at you and now it's your turn to share something with me so we can be even that's just really weird it's very unhealthy and it's a major major red flag in platonic relationships or romantic relationships as well i know i've said the words heal on your own time multiple times i don't think that healing is something that you necessarily have to do alone but you need to make sure that the people that you are going to to facilitate your healing journey have the time and the space and the mental capacity to hold on to or to hold space for what you have to say everything that you're going through piggybacking off of the whole like trauma dumping exchanging trauma thing to get to know somebody it's something that a lot of people don't realize is super super helpful is just saying like hey i'm going through a good bit right now like there's no expectation i have for your answer for this but like do you have the mental capacity do you have the space right now and the time to just like kind of listen to what i'm going through and help me out and just give me emotional support you can totally say yes or no it's so important to tell people that they have permission to say no because there are a lot of people pleasers me personally i'm not a people pleaser i will say no in a heartbeat but there are a lot of people pleasers in the world it does help to give them that option of saying no so what does healing look like healing doesn't always have to be therapy i know in this economy right now inflation upcoming recession not everybody can afford therapy and that's totally fine and i do feel like a lot of people are like just go to therapy even though i'm a huge proponent for therapy i love therapy i think therapy has been a huge help in my life personally if you don't have the means or the time to go to therapy you're not a lost cause that doesn't mean just like give up on your healing journey until you know you have the time and you have the money there are so many things that you can do introspectively to heal there are so many things that you can do on your own time like intentionally living for yourself having an abundance mindset there's just so many things that you can look into to help yourself heal from past traumas because i'm a huge believer that if you are not able to heal your past traumas or actively do so healing is a journey not a destination but if you're not on the path or like intentionally trying to acknowledge the things that you've been through and how they're affecting you now i don't think that you're ever going to fully be able to live in the present and that's something that a lot of people might not believe until they actually put it in practice so keep that in mind all right next topic this one really gets on my nerves because i hate when there's a situation somebody's like oh maybe you should talk to them because they might not realize what they're doing 
I'm a huge believer that there are intentions behind every single action. I think communicating what is hurting you or making you feel some type of way in situations and your friendships and your relationships is definitely like a given. That's something that you are responsible for doing and bringing to their attention. But I want to say my belief is 99.9999999999% 9 of the time people know exactly what they're doing. And I just do not like that whole narrative of like, they probably don't realize. They realize, mm -hmm, they do. Because there's something called self-awareness. And at this point, once you hit, I wanna say 16, 17, and you're lacking self-awareness, mm -hmm. Mm -mm. because a lot of the times it's just an excuse it's just an excuse to do bad and harmful things to other people and to try and get away with it and then you paint yourself as the victim and it's like no mm -mm. you know what you're doing you know what you're doing also just be careful for those people who are very quick to just play the victim all the time because they're typically the ones who people are going to say yeah they just they i seriously doubt they realize like they just seem so nice people can seem nice I always say niceness and kindness are two different things. Being nice is an act. Being kind is a character trait. It's who you are. It's what you practice. It's what you put into the universe. But anybody can appear to be nice. Anybody can look nice. Anybody can seem nice and not be kind. Um, another thing is I am not a naive person. I have friends that are naive. I don't think it's necessarily bad to be a naive person if anything sometimes i can be a little envious because life is easier for for lack of a better word dumber people the dumber you are the easier life is ignorance truly is bliss you don't see what's going on over here you don't see people for who they are with their malicious intent life is just you're looking at life through rose colored glasses but like if you are somebody who is analytically natured you are reading body language you are reading intentions you are knowing that there are always intentions and motives behind the words people say the actions but i, I will say like i don't think it's a bad thing to be naive if anything, it's like, yeah, a blessing and a curse. I think the dumber you are, the more fun you have because you're not worried about <laughs> what is actually going on. And that is like such a relief, you know, it really is. But I will say even, you know, once again, self-awareness, it's my biggest pet peeve when people are like, I just, I'm not self-aware. If you're self-aware enough to tell me that you're not self-aware, you're self-aware. Yeah. Next up daddy issues and i'm throwing this up in quotes because how and when did society just decide that the lack of responsibility the absence the neglect of a paternal father figure is the responsibility of girls and women when did that become a thing? Because I always hear daddy issues being thrown around as like a, oh, I don't want a girl with daddy issues. Why are we not talking about the absent fathers, the neglectful fathers who are responsible for these quote unquote daddy issues? It's so interesting to me how women are so responsible for not only how they're perceived, but how the men around them are perceived as well. And depending on how the men around women are perceived, you're either praised or you're berated. When will men take responsibility for inflicting harm on other women? When will men take accountability for their own negligence, emotionally abusive tendencies, and lack of responsibility? Also, well, why isn't... Oh, sorry, there's construction happening outside of my house right now. <laughs> but also, why are we as a society not as concerned about boys and men who have mommy issues? Hmm? Why are we not? I'm genuinely like, I'm genuinely asking because it doesn't make much sense to me. It is very rare, especially in our contemporary society. I want to say in this Western world where we have all of this nuance when it comes to patriarchal ideologies and feminism and everything like that. It is maybe not very rare, but it is more rare than ever for there to be two parents in a household that provide the necessary means for their children in that household to have 
secure relationships with both parental figures. I think a lot of people link this whole daddy issues phenomenon with a causation between daughters not having good relationships with their fathers. We could all say mommy issues, sons not having good relationships with their mothers. And you know, this could be a whole nother video of what is defined as a good relationship with your paternal figure, right? But for the sake of not making this video 30 hours long, I feel like everybody should understand what I mean by good, secure, whatever other psychological word you would want to use. I don't think that there's necessarily a causation based link between children and the relationship with their parents. If anything, I think it's more so of a correlation. Because a lot, especially in my generation, there's a lot of healing that's being done. Especially like I can speak for my generation because I think the beautiful thing about my generation is like we know and we accept that like life is meant for living. It's not meant meant for slaving away, it's not meant for working for other people, it's not meant for other people who treat you bad to determine how your life is going to end up, the kinds of things that you are going to be able to accomplish, the kind of person that you are able to be. Something that I love about my generation and just the mindset that we have in regards to our society is that there is no limit for happiness, there is no limit for wealth, there is no limit for feeling fulfilled and that's what I think is different between the whole daddy issues thing might have yeah, I'm sure the other generations ate that up and didn't ask any questions but me as a member of Gen Z I'm asking questions if you think about it just a little bit you realize how dumb it truly is anybody anywhere anybody who's eating this up even women if women are eating this up I'm embarrassed for you I'm so embarrassed for you now I feel like I could do another like sit down video about dating because I had a lot to say about dating but these are just a few subtopics under dating that I'd like to bring to light. The talking stage, any of you guys who are entertaining that, you're being scammed. You're being scammed, especially specifically heterosexual women, you're being scammed. Back in the day, the talking stage meant we're going out on dates. People are putting effort into plans to sit across from a table and get to know each other, to spend time experiencing things together, to see if it's a good fit. I do not like the idea that like a date is such a serious thing. A talking stage, huh? That just sounds so stupid. I was just hyping up my generation, but in the dating and just commitment department, we need to do better. With online dating, it's just like, oh, keep your options open. And that's all a talking stage is. It is not committing to any sort of situation, just so you can keep your options open. So if another better thing comes around, it's easier for you to jump ship. Why can't you just say like, hey, I'm interested in taking you out. I'm interested in going on a date with you. The whole like going with the flow thing. What's the point of talking to somebody? What's the point in, you know, all of this like romantic chit chat, all this sexual lingo you're using if the end goal isn't a relationship? Like what happened to dating with intention to find somebody that you're compatible with to decide if you want to commit to that person and be in a relationship? What happened to that? I don't think there was anything wrong with that. But the whole talking stage thing, scam you're getting scammed you're getting your time wasted because why are you in a talking stage with somebody for more than four weeks and a lot of the time these talking stages like the, the amount of effort required for a talking stage should be considered a talking stage all the person has to do is send you a text every couple of days heighten your standards heighten your expectations if somebody's interested in me I'm not gonna sit here and text and I don't have Snapchat, but Snapchat back and forth and swipe up and on stories and DM and all of that. No, we can talk about our interests and then find something to do that would be a fun experience for the both of us so we can actually spend time together, bask in each other's energies, bask in each other's presences, get to know each other. And I feel like this might be a little controversial and I hate to say this, but this is just truly how I feel in this moment. I feel like a lot of the time as a heterosexual woman, I feel like a lot of the time guys who say that they're looking for partners don't put any effort in is because they know they can find a girl who isn't going to require as much effort and the effort I'm talking about is just common decency like a what are you doing text the day up no let's do something when are you free actually making a plan another thing situationships scam because why are you doing girlfriend and wife things why are you doing boyfriend and husband things for a person who barely even considers you a friend? And that leads me into another topic. A lot of y'all 
are dating people you don't even like. A lot of you guys are talking to people that you wouldn't even want to have as a friend. A lot of you guys are entertaining people who, you know, if you weren't bored and you actually had things to do, you would not entertain that person. There's this scarcity mindset that comes with like dating nowadays, but also this overabundance mindset where it's like oh if this doesn't work out i can just download an app and get another person it just it's a weird nuance like fusion of scarcity and abundance which is just creates very unhealthy lack of standards unhealthy expectations for how to court and pursue somebody whether you're a man or a woman or non-binary person wouldn't i'm just like genuinely like i'm talking to specifically the people who like are just like texting back and forth like if if you're in a little talking stage right now if you're in a little situationship right now wouldn't you i'm asking you like would you not prefer for instead of that person being like what you doing or like hey good morning every couple of days wouldn't you rather them say like hey um i'm free this day are you free this day i'd like to grab food let's grab a coffee and let's just talk oh there's this new restaurant that i've been wanting to try out Would you want to join me like, wouldn't you much rather somebody actually put effort and invest the actual time to get ready to get up out of their house, to go on Yelp and find a restaurant, find a cafe, find an activity for you guys to do together? Wouldn't you rather, like, have that level of effort rather than just, like, a, hey, what are you doing text at... 11 30 p.m i'm not taking any less but like if you guys needed to hear it like you deserve better than just like a talking to you situation ship if somebody wants to commit to you they will commit to you and i'm telling you guys once we i'm talking to my girlies here just because i am talking to my community as a heterosexual woman i'm talking to other heterosexual women once we collectively raise our standards our standards will be met it's just the fact that like guys know there are so many options of other girls who will take less do better do better for yourselves you guys deserve better and if you're single for a minute you're single for a minute if you're single for a long time you're single for a long time but it's so much more fulfilling to work on being happy and fulfilled with your own presence than to chase bread crummy attention from a notification like i am a firm believer in if there is no proactive effort in doing things together and experiencing life together and getting to know each other beyond a hey what are you doing what's up that person isn't interested in you they just don't want their phone to be dry they just want a little notification and it doesn't mean that like you are not valuable you're not valuable to them but that says a lot about them it says less about you than it does them and i feel like a lot of girls will tie their self-worth to how guys are treating them but really your self-worth is the standard that you set for yourself to be treated that's all i have for this video <laughs> i'm done y'all i'm done i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs up also like comment down below your thoughts whether you agree with me whether you disagree safe space for everybody um follow me on instagram at lexi j pool and subscribe to my channel new videos every saturday and sunday at 12 p.m eastern time and yeah there will be a vlog up tomorrow i'm gonna start uploading vlogs on sundays just because sundays feel like more like i want to sit down and watch a vlog on sunday rather than a saturday you know i'm gonna go ahead and sign off but before i go i want to remind you guys to spread kindness and always remember that the less you wander the more you wonder i love you guys so so much and i will see you in my next video bye guys Light a cottage room.